Good evening. Thank you for joining us on Straight Talk. Our guest this evening is the Chairman of Consumer Council, Mr. Clement Chan. Mr. Chan has an accounting background and is currently the Managing Director of Assurance at BDO in Hong Kong. He was the President of the Hong Kong Institute of Certified Public Accountants in 2014 and was involved in accounting standards setting and governance activities. Tonight, we have asked him to share with us why protecting consumer rights is vital to ensuring Hong Kong is still a shopper's paradise. Welcome, Clement. Thank you, Eugene. Right, Clement, as you know, um, Hong Kong has been known as a shopper's paradise for decades. And whenever there is consumption, disputes bound to arise. And while all these disputes are kind of unavoidable, um, how prevalent are actually shoppers' complaints that you've received at the Consumer Council? Uh, it's very important to us, as you know, that uh, for complaints, depending on the uh, nature of the complaints, the number of the complaints on cer certain industries, it does give us some sort of uh, uh, in, uh, insight on uh, which are the prevailing uh, consumer sort of uh, behavior and the industries that, uh, that need the attention and improvement. Right, so how many complaints do you get I mean, on average per year, do you get a, a one that have more complaints and one that have fewer complaints? Uh, just to give you an example, in 2022, we did receive about uh, 30,000, over 30,000 complaints, which was about a 43% jump on a year, year on year basis. So in the previous years, we did get around, you know, sort of uh, over 20,000, 20, 20 something thousand sort of complaints. Mm. So would you say that the recent trend will be sort of on the upward scale or it just ha happened to be just 2020, 22? I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, the nature of the complaints, the source of the complaints, the nature of the complaints uh, do vary a bit. Although the number uh, does jump a lot, but in fairness, the uh, complaints about the actual consumption carried out in the um, market actually comes down a bit, but the total number increased because of the increased number of uh, complaints on the online shopping. Really? Yeah. So that means 2022 is a year that you see sort of a 43% jump, as you just said. And do you see this as a trend in the years to come, or you think it's just one year in 2022? I do. I do think that the online shopping complaints will be, will be uh, on the rising trend in the years to come. Right. So what are the highest number of complaint cases? I'm sure you've got different categories. I mean, what are the most common complaints that you receive at the council? The 2022 statistic gave us that uh, clear picture. The one that is leading is the uh, food, and in, food and entertainment sector. Food and entertainment sector, particularly the uh, portal, uh, the, the, the food portal, the online food portal, actually is leading the, uh, the list. Mm -hmm. As you could imagine, because of the uh, COVID and pandemic that we just had, I think uh, more and more people are ordering their food through the uh, online uh, food portal shops and things like that. So, But I'm sure all, all, all of us, are, like our friends or relatives, they've been ordering food online and I'm sure that trend will continue because it's, it's quite convenient. So do you have any complaint cases that you can share with us? Anything interesting in the food and entertainment? Sure, I, I, I think the most common causes for complaint in the uh, food delivery is about the uh, non-delivery or the loss of the com uh, loss of the order. Uh, we had a case where whereby the uh, the customer uh, knows that uh, portal very well, and he did order uh, 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 order of food uh, on one night, just like what he usually does. And uh, he got the confirmation back from the uh, shopper saying that the order has been taken. Mm. So he waited and over half an hour, the food didn't come, come back and uh, he was wondering. So he checked on the apps again. Mm -hmm. It says that the order's been confirmed. So he waited for another hour and then he called up the, uh, the customer service. The customer service told him that uh, the order was, uh, was not there. So he said that he would like to uh, uh, cancel it, mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, and and that was he thought that was the end of it. But the following day, in the morning, 
then the, his order did come through. Really? Yeah, and then he called up the customer service again. And then it, it, he found out that the order actually was initially taken as a pre-order for the following day. Mm -hmm. So that, that create, you know, sort of a source of uh, complaint. And sometimes I, I, I think, you know, that, that tells you, even though you know the shops, you know the system well, you might have went, uh, gone through the uh, procedures for thousands of times, still because of uh, computer, because of uh, uh, connectivity of the signal and things like that, sometimes it, it, it does create some un, unexpected, you know, sort of error. Right, so if something like that happens to you, what will you advise our viewers to do? I'm sure that can happen to anyone. Yeah. Uh, I think our advice would be uh, asking, asking the customers to be vigilant, to be uh, particularly uh, paying attention to uh, the terms and conditions and, uh, and what happened if uh, you want to cancel the order or you want to request for the refund, mm -hmm. uh, what sorts of uh, things that have been written on the uh, website or on the initial sort of uh, advertisement saying uh, in what circumstances they could do whatever to uh, cancel the uh, the order. But surely you would say, let's put put a case to the consumer council when that happens, right? Uh, if they exhaust all those things and still cannot get the right uh, right results, they could come to us to see whether we can help them. Right. So apart from food and entertainment, what other complaints do you get that are, that are quite common? Uh, the next category uh, uh, from the uh, the second category is the uh, electrical appliances right and electrical appliances again you know it actually uh, went up quite a bit is now uh, uh, close to 30 uh, close to 3,000 and uh, that uh, actually has increased by about uh, 16 percent as compared with 2021 mm -hmm. and uh, I think we the we we, we take it that uh, because, again, because of the pandemic, people tend to stay at home more often. Mm -hmm. And because of their time at home, then uh, they, they, are, they are using the electrical appliances more. And as a result, the wear and tear and the uh, uh, more sort of attention paid to the proper functioning of the electrical appliances lead to the uh, increased number of complaints as well. Well, hopefully those complaints aren't related to safety issues because I remember recently in mid-level there was a flat that was I mean, in, in fire because of some overheating of, of a system. So how does the council ensure safety issues are addressed and make sure the, all the, uh, the, 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 the extra community are being protected? There is a specific uh, legislation called the uh, Consumer Goods Safety Ordinance mm -hmm. that is a very clear legislation regulating and uh, asking all the uh, merchants, all the traders wh who are selling electrical appliances in Hong Kong and to consumers need to ensure that all the goods that they are selling are complying with the safety standard required mm. by Hong Kong at large. Yeah, just now when you mentioned two of the, the major complaints are due to COVID, that people having more online ordering of food and not using more electrical appliances. Mm. One thing that comes to my mind is actually with opening of the borders, like traveling resume, what we call a revenge tourism, right? So do you get more complaints on that as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Particularly at uh, now, in recent times when the pandemic is uh, really behind us mm -hmm. and the border reopened, and uh, we are seeing more and more number of uh, travel-related uh, complaints. Mm -hmm. Uh, to give you an example, like in uh, in 2020, uh, uh, 2022, uh, when we were talking about you know the complaint cases in travel related matters, it actually went up to around uh, 2,500 over 2,500 cases, which was about 43% uh, increase from from last year as well. Yeah. So with all these complaints, I'm sure the council will want to help to do resolution and. Sorry to ask, do you have any target rate of achieving to, to sort of sort out these issues? We don't have a target rate as such, but uh, we try to uh, help in whatever uh, circumstance, in whatever cases that was reported to us, we try to do our bit in helping uh, the, the, the related party, the stakeholders to come to some sort of compromise or, or resolution mm -hmm. through our conciliation for conciliation procedures. Right, so 
what will be more preemptive core consumer protection efforts that council will do because what we said so far are what has happened i'm sure you want to do some sort of education or prevention i mean what type of efforts will you try to do this to minimize all these complaints uh, in our view and our experience, I think it takes more to uh, to create a preemptive, a safety preemptive uh, situation for consumers, and and I think that there are three p pillars involved. Mm -hmm. The first one is about the uh, the right uh, legislative regimes. Like I said, uh, uh, in Hong Kong, we do have uh, legislations in relation to consumer protection. But however, unlike some other jurisdictions, we do not have one single legislation protecting the consumer's rights. But we do have a, a, a few related to consumer uh, related matters, which has a combined effect of pro pro providing protection for consumers, such as uh, trade description ordinance, such as uh, consumer safety uh, ordinance that I mentioned uh, earlier. Right, Chairman, let's take a break now and we will, we will be back very soon. Thank you for staying with us. We have been talking with Mr. Clement Chan, the Chairman of the Consumer Council, about the number and types of complaints that they receive and how the Council resolves these disputes. So, Chairman, in the first part we had briefly touch on the different categories, and we, st we do see a trend of increase. I, I, I'm, and I believe that's something that you'd, you'd like to clarify. Yes, uh, sorry about that. Uh, just now when we were talking about the number of uh, complaints that we received in 2022, I did give you the figure that it was over 30,000. It represents about 12% increase on a year-on-year -year basis rather than 43% that I, uh, I, I alluded earlier in, in by era. Well, I'm sure there's, I'm sure the viewers will, will appreciate their, your clarification. Thank um, you. I think for most viewers, I think the council I mean, is quite well known to do in-depth reports and, and product tests and studies. And, and we do see the Consumer Council at monthly conferences and also a very long time uh, magazine called, a Chinese magazine called The Choice. So you have released, recently released reports on something like food and, and like carcinogens or cooking oil, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but some people will say that the council is a toothless tiger, not because I'm, uh, I'm in their profession, because you can't really make them change their way of practice. So how will you respond to that as a chairman? Uh, well, we are not. Uh, it's true that we are not a law enforcement agent in Hong Kong. But however, there are so many things in our toolbox that we can do to make sure that uh, things are happening in the orderly manner. Uh, to give you a few examples, like uh, um, we are always in close contact with uh, law enforcement agents such as Customs, such as uh, Hong Kong Police Force. If uh, during our in the course of our work and our survey, if we come, if it comes to our attention that some of the uh, merchants are practicing unscrupulous uh, practices, we, uh, such as uh, they are selling things which are uh, contravening the uh, trade pra trade description ordinance, or uh, some people are uh, doing the the things uh, by by deception, we can always report it to the law enforcement agent to ask them to take a prompt action. And don't forget, we also have uh, the ultimate uh, last resort that uh, we can always rely on is that uh, there's a very uh, effective and powerful tool that we can use, uh, such as uh, name and shame. If we, you know, sort of uh, advertise or uh, uh, make, make, make it to public that uh, what are the uh, erroneous uh, sort of action and, and the malpractices of certain merchants, they are definitely out of the market because of uh, our, our action. Right. Chairman, I do have an opportunity to go and visit some of your website and I realise that you're not just protecting shoppers, but you also do advocacy work to protect our consumers in, in, in our daily life from various aspects like housing, commuting, dining and everything even to insurance and finance. So can you tell us more about your advocacy work? I mean, it's definitely not an easy work because it encompasses such a wide range of topics and each one will, will take time. And so how long do these studies take and how would you best communicate to, this, to, our, to the community? Indeed, you're absolutely right, Eugene. 
we uh, we cover not just the uh, consumer ac uh, uh, expenses on uh, entertainment, food, and things like that. We do cover you know everything that is involved in the consumer life, such as uh, uh, housing, commuting, you know, etc. Like like you mentioned. And uh, for advocacy, we we actually you know spend a lot of our resources in doing advocacy. If we identify some topic which is worth um, studying and 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 uh, dive deeper for the consumer interest, we we will you know sort of uh, put in resources into preparing you know sort of a, a detailed study. Normally, such a detailed study would involve work uh, could be uh, going. To as long as uh, one year, we typically we we spend a lot of resources in studying research surveys. We carry out interviews, and we also you know sort of uh, um, do a lot of observations and desktop studies you know on related matters before we come to some sort of uh, uh, position on on the uh, subject matter. And and for the last. 10 years, we actually did over 20 uh, such topics and, 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 and uh, uh, focus studies. All right, Chairman, I mean, as a, as a community person, if you want to do something, you would go to your website and look at all your materials. But, you know, things are happening at very fast speed now. And how can, you, how can we ensure the information they receive are still valid? Uh, normally, when we do you know decide on studying certain areas, certain space, uh, we you know dive very deep, and and normally you know it cover the uh, the issues that are not just uh, time specific. It's really you know the hardcore matters relating to that issues. Just to give you an example, uh, lately we had done a survey on uh, property. Uh, of, uh, of outside of Hong Kong because we just noted that there's a growing interest of Hong Kong people in buying properties outside of Hong mm -hmm. Kong which had been you know sort of sold and uh, and 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 uh, displayed in mm -hmm. the uh, in the um, uh, selling events in Hong Kong and we believe that uh, uh, because of the growing interest we do think that uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, things that we should recommend or warn or remind the customers, uh, consumers to be aware of when they are buy buying properties outside mm -hmm. of Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is the kind of things that that is really non-time specific. Right. So there's a pool of material that's good for reference for the general community. Should they want to spend the money and they want to be vigilant, your your, I mean, the council would be a very good resource place, isn't it? Yes, yes, right. indeed. Right, just now you mentioned about um, you do work with the enforcement agencies, so mm. the customs and excise and, and also the Hong Kong police force. But those are actually reactionary work again. Will the council or has the council been able to change any of the legislation? Because all your reports must be, I mean, put in a good, good deal of work, like even up to a year. It will be a wasteful effort if it doesn't really change things because sometimes we do need laws to make sure things will happen in the right direction. What are your experience like? I mean, does the, the government take your advice seriously? Have you seen actual implementation or, or new laws put in? Uh, I think it depends on a lot of other variables as well. Although, uh, like I said, uh, the topic that uh, we, we chose normally carries a lot of uh, impact on consumers at large, and that's why we pick them. But also, it depends on a lot of other things, like, uh, uh, i give you an example, uh, and, and other things that we looked at in the past was the cooling off period, cooling off period uh, to do with certain industries. And it was, uh, such a relevant topic for a lot of consumers, particularly consuming or enjoying the, the surfaces of those uh, affected industries. But because of things like uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which might already create a, a very general sort of uh, hardship for the merchants in the industries around that time, so when our report came out, you know, at that time, uh, during the, the COVID, it, the government might think, well, I'm sure the government would 
see the angle of uh, the need of looking into those those spaces but because the timing might not be right it you know they they are saying that oh you know they would uh, try to to look at these uh, issues at a later time after the uh, general sort of uh, uh, trading uh, circumstances mm -hmm. and phenomenon phenomenon become better right yeah. chairman recently you were in the news that talking about this property management costs i mean the I mean, why would you want to do a survey on property management fees? I mean, it's just suddenly, just suddenly come out and, and I'm wondering, any rationale behind that? The simple fact is over half of our population in Hong Kong are actually living in multi-storey buildings. And when, they, when people are living in multi-storey buildings, they need to pay building management fees. Sometimes it's out of their control. And, uh, and that's why you know, it affects a lot of people and the magnitude is quite, uh, um, quite, could be quite significant for a lot of households. Right. Therefore, we picked that uh, topic to look at. The well, reason why I raised raise that up is all of us are up in tune in to say we have to pay management fees on time or else your name will be posted on the notice board. Um, but do you actually get complaints on those and, and how many were they? Oh, we do. Uh, like in the last 11 years, we actually received over 600, close to 700 complaints about the quality of the management fee, uh, the quality of the management uh, service, or the um, uh, the misapplication of management fees, so on and so forth. And therefore, you know, we do actually see and receive a lot of uh, complaints about management fee. Yeah, have we been able to resolve some of these complaints that you received? We did. We did uh, resolve some of the complaints, but uh, however, the experience that we have actually uh, give us the, uh, the impression that uh, a lot of the lay owners, they might not be as well equipped as the uh, developers or the management f uh, company in terms of uh, uh, the knowledge of uh, the, the the management fees and this is a quite a complex um, subject therefore you know we think that uh, it's definitely worthwhile for uh, for us to do more research on this and try to uh, facilitate or try to whip up the uh, the due interest on this area so as to hopefully uh, see some sort of improvement coming in Right, Chairman, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. And thank you, Clement, for explaining to us how the Consumer Council continues to protect consumers' interests and empowers them in their purchases to get the best value for their money. This will definitely help Hong Kong maintain its reputation as a shopper's paradise. Thank you, viewers, for tuning in, and we will see you next time.